The total tensile strength in the tendon will be determined by total number of tendons times its effective stress in the tendons times the areas of the tendon. This effective stress in the tendon will be determined by the total strength of the tendons times the modulus of elasticity of the tendon. As for this total strength in the tendon, it is defined by the pre-strength due to the pre-stressing force and also the strength due to the bending of the section. In this case, all the tendons are being stressed under a constant magnitude of force. The pre-strength developed in the tendons will be the same. However, due to different locations of the tendon, the equivalent strength developed in the tendon will be different slightly. This will result in slight difference in terms of the stress developed in the tendon and subsequently the tensile force might be different. Bear in mind that the calculations of the stress in the tendon based on the strength developed in the tendon is kept at the design strength of the tendon which is given by this formula. In another word, the calculated epsilon s times the modulus of elasticity, if it is less than the design stress of the tendon, then epsilon s and e s will be used. If the tendon has already yielded, and the epsilon s times e s is greater than the design stress, the design stress will be used. This needs to be checked carefully as in some cases you may have the total effective strength slightly different among different layers of the tendon. When the sigma s here differs by the layer, that means not all the tendons has yielded. This will result in slightly different tensile force in the tendon. Now let us look into the calculation step to determine the total tensile force in the tendon. First you will need to determine the pre-strength developed in the tendon. This pre-strength is due to the pre-stressing load. You know that there are 1200 kN pre-stressing load being divided by 8 units of strength. The stress developed in the strand due to the pre-stressing load will be 1079.1 newton per mn square. This is calculated based on the formula here. Then, based on the sigma PE divided by modulus or elasticity of the steel, you are able to obtain the pre-strength. As all the tendon here having the same pre-stressing load, Therefore, they are having the same degree of pre-strength. Next, you will need to determine the locations of the tendon. Based on the geometrical property of the section, the centroid area of the section is 532 mm. You know that the centroid of the tendons will fall at a eccentricity of 450 mm. The spacing between the steel bar is 50 mm. The distance of the bottom layer of reinforcement bar from the soffit of the beam can be determined by minusing the YB with E and with half of the spacing. That gives you 57 mm from the soffit as given here. The D here represents the distance from the top surface of the beam to the bottom layer of the tendon. The overall height of the beam will be 750 minus 57, you get 693 mm. Next, you need to determine the positions of the second layer of tendon. You know that the spacing between the bottom layer and the top layer of the tendon is 50. 
you may use 57 plus 50 that give you 107 mm and the effective depth of the tendon now it will be 750 minus 107 you get 643 mm you need the D for the interpolations from the strand diagram of the section it is for use to compute the bending strength developed in the tendon it is important to highlight that not to confuse the neutral axis of the bending with the centroid of the cross section this centroid of the cross sections is obtained from the geometrical property analysis which represent the center of the cross sectional area however the neutral axis here represent the axis which differentiate the compressions and tension region due to bending you know that the centroid from the soffit is 532 mm and based on the calculations in the previous step the x now is equals to 26.8 mm the neutral axis and the centroid of the sections are not in the same positions to make it simple this is purely geometrical x function is for us to determine the distance from the soffit and also the effective depth of the tendon this one is referring to the bending at the ultimate limit state x purpose is for us to compute the strength developed in the tendon for epsilon b now we use the interpolations based on the strength diagram here with the x of 10 and based on its positions in the section you are able to determine the bending strength epsilon b the total strength will be the pre strength plus the bending strength because of the positions of the tendon is different the bending strength will be different this will result in different total strength from the total strength of 10 multiply the modulus of elasticity you will get a value which is later checked against the design strength the formula for the design strength is here which we have done the calculations in the previous steps it is found that the epsilon s time e s is greater than the design strength we know that all the tendon here has already yield and therefore the design strength is being used which is 1234.3 newton per mm square based on the design strength here multiply the numbers of the strength and also multiply the area of the strength you will get the total tension force and the summations of the tension force you will get 1372.6 kN this number should theoretically be similar to this number if you found a significant difference between the two number most likely you have some error in the calculation as the section here has only two layers of the tendon therefore in your calculations there will be only two row in some cases you may have more than two layers of tendon depending the number of layers of tendon the numbers of row will be calculated special attention is to be given for the tendon which is located closer to the neutral axis of bending as these are the tendons which is most likely to have the ultimate stress less than the design stress based on the computed data you can more or less tell that whether the calculations is correct